Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is incredible. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is gonna be one of the craziest videos when it comes to like importance of the future. You guys know that I've spent my entire life really just working with reptiles, whether it's breeding reptiles, now having a reptile zoo, just getting people excited about keeping reptiles, looking at them as not this cold-blooded animal that doesn't have emotions, but really truly amazing animals. And you know that we've had issues with Florida trying to ban iguanas and tegus, and of course we had the, the bill here in Michigan, the 6455, that was really gonna probably destroy our zoo in the future if it was to pass. Well, I gotta be honest with you, buckle up guys, because we have some massive things coming down the pike across the country that I'm gonna talk to you about now, and I need you to not only listen to this video, take action, but share with as many people as you can, because if you guys love reptiles like I do, the future of keeping reptiles could be in peril right now. So please, buckle up guys, it's gonna be a wild one. Now you guys know that we actually just unboxed Flapjack, the black-throated monitor, just what, a month and a half or so ago. So we obviously ship a lot of these animals in. You guys remember, we've unboxed a ton of animals here at the Reptile Zoo, and basically there's a couple different ways you can ship, right? You know, sometimes it's to the airport. That's the old way where you would literally have to drive to the airport that's like an hour away, go to the freight department and pick the stuff up. Now the most common way to ship reptiles is actually to just use FedEx, to be honest with you. They come right to your door. It's super simple, and we certainly have unboxed a ton of animals for the Reptile Zoo. And really Really the thing that changed BHB is back when you were able to start shipping animals FedEx, you know? Because again, it wasn't practical to go to the airport for most people. It was hard even for us to drive an hour one way to the airport. Now you can actually ship these animals right FedEx, and that's what BHB is all about, right? I mean, we literally ship thousands of animals every year to people's new pets and their forever homes. I mean, it's an amazing thing, and it's so absolutely beautiful. Believe it or not, right now, in New York State, they are proposing a ban of shipping of all animals. We're not talking about just reptiles here, people. We're talking all animals. This would include fish. This would include reptiles. It would include hamsters. It would dogs, cats, you name it. You could not ship a live animal in the state of New York. Couldn't ship it out, couldn't ship it in. That would destroy the entire pet trade. Not only the reptile trade, but the entire pet trade. Can you imagine if all of a sudden you couldn't get fish at your fish store? You couldn't get uh, rodents for your animals. You couldn't get your new snake. You couldn't get anything. I mean, that is an unbelievable law that is being proposed in New York right now. And I'm going to continue to shout out USARC. I'm going to put a link in the description. Go to USARC.org and you can find out all the information on everything that I'm about to talk about and how you personally can get involved to help make sure that these laws are not passed. Because much like 6455 here in Michigan, we were able to kill that in committee, right? So the fact is, is you want this to get killed before it goes to the floor for a vote because if it goes to the floor for a vote there's a good chance it's going to pass if you can kill it in committee that's the way you really destroy these bills now 6455 was killed in committee here in michigan but we saw this law a year or so ago come up so there's a good chance we're going to see it come back now again usarc.org down below is going to have your action to actually take but new york has some bad legislation on the pike and we've got to make sure we stop it now for some reason tegus have been coming under a lot of pressure lately now don't get me wrong down in florida they definitely have some invasive issues issues when it comes to tegus, but for whatever reason, a lot of other places are starting to really look at tegus as a big time problem. And in South Carolina, believe it or not, they are actually looking at banning all Argentine tegus. That's right. I mean, you know Tassie is absolutely amazing. Now, don't get me wrong. Yes, I understand that there's invasive issues and we have to be very cognizant of that. And we have to do our absolute best not to let that happen because we don't want a population of tegus running around in the wild, whether it's in South Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, wherever the case may be. But the fact is, is that should you not be able to keep a tegu because of the potential for invasiveness? Believe it or not, in Florida, the FWC said if it can breed, we do not want it to be legal in our state. That was the statement. Literally, if it could breed in the wild at all, any animal at all, if it could breed in the wild, they want to make it illegal down in Florida. Now that's kind of scary to me. Now don't get me wrong, I understand there's an invasive issue and I am completely empathetic to that and we have to do the best we can do to try to help solve that problem, 100%. But outlawing everyone owning an animal is getting kind of scary, isn't it? I mean, isn't that the fact? So that's right, Argentine tegus, not available in South Carolina if this law passes. So what we need to do, again, 
US ARC, there's a call to action. Follow that call to action. Now when you do emails, which actually has like kind of a, a template for an email that you just have to enter your name and stuff like that, you can email off or you can write your own email or you can call. But remember, be very kind. You know, listen, being mean to these people that are on the committee or are passing this legislation, it doesn't help anybody. I know we can all get emotional about this. I get emotional about this, but you have to be level-headed. You know, you're gonna get a lot farther when you're actually kind to somebody rather than trying to attack them. You know, let's not do that, right? So again, call to action, South Carolina, big one coming up, Argentine Tegus. Back at you guys with another deal with our friends over at Raycon. You guys know that I love Raycon and literally I start every single day of my life with listening to music from Raycon. Just gets me in the mood, gets my kind of spirit going. I also love the fact that I can unplug from things. You know, I can listen to news, podcasts, all kinds of stuff without actually being plugged into things. Just doing my work, whether it's at the gym or here at the shop, whatever the case is. I mean, they're just amazing. Also, the quality is incredible. The extra bass, the noise isolating. I mean, it's just kind of the perfect way to kind of go through my day without bothering people, jamming the music really loud for everyone else, mainly for me. And I also listen to a ton of self-help books because you guys know that I love this. It's a great company co-founded by Ray J. You guys know that celebrities like Snoop Dogg, Mike Tyson, J.R. Smith are absolutely obsessed with Raycons, meaning that you're going to have to be obsessed with them because I know I have. Like I said, I have used the same pair for over a year, I think a year and a half now, and they're still going strong. And literally, they're like half the price of the big name brand, so you get a great deal. Raycon offers their wireless earbuds in a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit options. And they have six hours of playing time. And with this cool little carrying case that you, I carry around all the time, you can charge them up to four times. That's a lot of hours of time before you even have to plug them back in. And hey guys, if you for some reason don't like them, which just isn't gonna happen, there's actually a 45 day return policy. So just return them, you get your money back, no big deal. But there ain't no way that's gonna happen. And right now, click the link in the description and go to buyraycon.com slash Brian B to get 15% off your order. That's right, click the link in the description and go to buyraycon.com slash Brian B to get 15% off your order. So go ahead, go and check these guys out. Show them some love, they support us so much and I love this company. I know that you're gonna love their product. This next one is actually really personal to me and it's in Oregon, which is actually looking at banning certain educational animals when it comes to traveling shows. Now we're not talking about a circus, we're not talking about a zoo, we're talking about educational shows. For, in particular, you got tortoises, monitor lizards, a whole bunch of stuff that would no longer be able to be taken out to schools or any educational thing, no traveling at all. And it's kind of personal to me, not only is that a huge part of what we do here at the Reptarium and a huge part of our future of what we do here at the Reptarium in Michigan, but also I have a good friend, Brad, that has a place called Brad's World that actually Steve Irwin himself and Terry Irwin used to go visit all the time that's out in Oregon and their life is all made on educational shows. Been doing it for like 30 years, traveling all over the place to schools and it's such an amazing thing to know that you might be taking his livelihood away or the majority of the animals he could take out is just unbelievable to me. I mean, we all kind of started our animal passion oftentimes when we had that animal guy come to our school and we could see animals. I see it all the time when I go to school and see kids' eyes light up and stuff like that and then they get really into it. Can you imagine? They want to ban that in Oregon. They want to make it an outlaw. Not banning all educational, but banning a bunch of the animals that we would take. And again, I always say this, you know, you might be thinking, well, I don't live in Oregon, I don't live in South Carolina, I don't live in New York, I don't live in Florida. The fact is, is that once these laws are passed in those states, oftentimes other states will actually take the same type of law and implement it in their state. So don't think that you're safe just because it's not your state, guys. We have to act now and we have to band together as a community and we have to spread the word to as many people as we can so we can stop Oregon, we can stop South Carolina, we can stop New York, we can stop Florida because this is all about anti-pet people. It's not really as much about protecting the environment as it really seems to be. The truth is is that the agenda is being pushed by anti-pet people and they're using whether it's invasive species or now you know there is a major issue when it comes to pathogens and viruses. They're using that platform to say hey we have to ban these animals because they could potentially pass a pathogen or start a virus which is you know I understand it's a concern that everyone should have certainly but we shouldn't pass legislation based on that alone because you've got to look at where the actual agenda is coming from and that agenda is coming from anti-pet, not what they're actually making it out to seem to be. So recently, US ARC won the Iguana and Tegu ban. They actually won it on the fact that it was unconstitutional, but 
that doesn't mean that we need to sit down and go, oh, everything's okay, because like I said, already the FWC is trying to go at it a different way. Like I mentioned before, they're saying that if it could breed in the wild, they want to outlaw it somehow. So again, iguanas, tegus, all those things are back on the docket to be potentially banned. We have to stay diligent, people, and stay aware of everything that is happening and try to stay ahead of it, because this is coming at us faster than ever before. And again, usarc.org is really our advocacy group, which is the United States Association of Reptile Keepers. They're our advocacy group, so we've got to definitely support them and follow their lead. You know, just try to stay on top of it. If you can help, it'll be huge because, again, beautiful iguanas, yes, invasive issues in Florida, 100%, definitely a problem. But should we ban them in places where they aren't potentially invasive? And even in the places that they're invasive, should people not to be able to keep them as pets? I don't know that I agree with that. And the fact is, is that a lot of times, this is, again, being passed not on even the invasiveness, but on the fact that now with the pandemic, they're saying that these reptiles can cause pathogens that can cause viruses, which, you know, is just not the case. And it's just causing fear mongering in order to pass the anti-pet agenda. Now wait for this one, guys. Alabama is proposing a law right now that would prohibit the sale, the possession, the transfer, the import, the export of reticulated pythons, Burmese pythons, rock pythons, anacondas, tegus, non-indigenous venomous reptiles, and a whole host of others. Meaning that you couldn't even keep your pet. Right now, if you had a pet reticulated python or any of the animals on this list, you could no longer possess them, right? I'm not talking about breeding them. I'm not talking about selling them. I'm talking about possessing them. That's right, Alabama basically shutting down all of those animals to the point where you would not be allowed to own them anymore. That is crazy, people. And again, I don't mean to be a downer here, man. I don't, you know, I love to keep positive and I love to keep upbeat, but I'll be honest with you guys, I'm freaking out a little bit right now. These are some unbelievable proposed legislation. And again, it's the anti-pet people that are really pushing this agenda and they're using the guise of invasiveness. They're using the guise of potential pathogens causing different viruses and that's just not going to help us in the end right we have to be diligent people because I'm telling you if we don't do the things that I'm asking you to do right now we aren't gonna have a reptile zoo like the Reptarium we're not gonna have breeding centers we're not gonna have pet reptiles and pet shops we're not gonna be able to keep these animals and we have to do this for future generations I mean listen guys there are animals that are being captive bred like crested geckos and rhino iguanas that more animals are being bred and kept than there are in the wild. As we go, there's less and less wild out there. We are kind of the ark, right? The captive breeding, the reptiles. We're the ark for the future of these animals as the environment is just continuing to be destroyed by us and less environment for the animals to actually thrive in the wild. We are their last hope and we have to preserve that for future generations. And this anti-pet thing is freaking me out right now, guys. I implore you, please share this video with everyone else. Please go down, follow you. US Arc, follow those alerts and start being part of the solutions. If you can donate to US Arc, please donate to US Arc. Let's do this together, people, because I tell you what, reptiles mean everything to me. They are my life and they have been my life forever. I can't imagine a future without them. And if these laws start getting passed and it starts to snowball state to state to state to state, we aren't going to have reptiles at all, people. And that's something that we just cannot settle for. So again, guys, I don't mean to be a downer. I mean, this is just a really important topic and I felt that this entire vlog should be dedicated to this one particular topic because this is the future, guys. So again, if you can just support usarc.org right down below. Uh, again, at least follow their alerts. If you can't donate to them, that's fine. But if you could follow their alerts, that would be amazing because if we as a group can do this, it's really good. You gotta remember that just like it with the bill here in Michigan, that committee typically would only have five, six correspondents with voters when they had a thousand thousand people reach out to them that committee was like wait a second this is a hot topic we don't want to touch this let's just bury this and let's not even go forward that's what we need to do now politely inundate them with emails and phone calls so that those committees that are potentially going to pass this legislation will say you know what this is a bad idea we want to walk away from this so again thank you so much for your support and thank you for following again please share this with as many people as you possibly can if you enjoyed this video and you want to just watch some animal stuff here's a playlist you can watch some animal stuff and we'll get back to animal stuff tomorrow right up here is a podcast i'll be talking about this stuff on my podcast so go check that out over here you can subscribe to this channel only 30 something thousand away from 3 million please turn your post notifications on as well have an absolutely wonderful day once again thank you be kind to somebody and i promise i'll see you tomorrow